average height. I feel like everyone's either really tall or really short. We, I'm like, five foot six. It the is middle. the average height. I'm an average, average height man. That's average height? Yeah. Oh, wow. You two are freakishly tall. Oh. Welcome to the Late News <laughs> Podcast, where we talk about things weeks behind them actually happening. Yeah, that way you can feel superior to us because we don't know what you know. You hear about that submarine? Yeah, <laughs> what happened to the submarine? I bet, I hope that they're okay, all those billionaires. My bet is that they're not okay. <laughs> I I think, well, okay, the, the issue is, like, the thing that I've seen floating around the most is that... It Should we introduce is, our guest really quick? Oh, uh, uh, this is Ian Charnis. Rhymes Whoa. with Harness. That's right, Harness the Charnis, folks. <laughs> Did you hear about the submarine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually started working on a, a sub uh, themed escape room. Oh, oh yeah. because of it or is it too before? soon? Or? No, no, I think it's, it's the right time. I actually. think there's certain things in life that if you if you sign up for something and something bad happens. Oh, like a buy the ticket, take the ride. Mentality? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I'm just saying we should get practice escaping from subs. Yeah, I agree. Going on. I think the issue is that uh, because of the pressure, they had to be bolted. There's not really a door so much as there is like a the, it, they assemble it with you inside of it. <laughs> do they think? Do you Ooh. think that it's sunk, or do you think that it came up? I I would have guessed that it like instantly depressurized at some point, except that for the first few hours when they were looking for it, they could hear knocking, apparently. Yeah, they, they heard knocking yesterday. My guess is that um, Logitech game controller they're using to pilot their sub with no safeties or redundancies whatsoever. you think they were using whatsoever. Amazon brand AA batteries? And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you don't have a AA and your AA ran out. Could you imagine the AA batteries in the controller died? <laughs> <laughs> they're shaking it. <laughs> like, they're taking apart their phones to try to MacGyver it. Everyone's sort of, I mean, it, it's like, it's sort of cursed, right? Because it is, it is like really shitty. And, at, yeah. but at the same time, like you can't, you can't get onto a rocket or into a submarine like that without understanding that there's like an actual serious yeah. chance that something the, goes horribly wrong. The biggest issue for me is the fact that they would tout it like as a positive thing that it was yeah. like off the shelf parts. Yeah. When the thing is like the reason like NASA doesn't use off the shelf parts is because sort of your quality control and your failure rate are way higher than you would want to be if you were yeah. making like a rocket ship for off the shelf parts. NASA needs a thousand dollar bolt, not a 50 cent bolt. They need a yeah. bolt that you can track its entire lineage. I, I don't know. I don't remember where I saw this. I don't know if it's true, but it did sort of blow my mind and illustrating how these like the, the cost of things is affected by this. It was a story about a factory in China that would make click pens, like just regular pens that click. And the only difference between the ones they would sell in the U.S. and the ones that they sold locally in China with a huge cost difference was apparently the QA tester would click the American ones multiple times and they would click the Chinese ones once. Really? So and it was that, cheaper? I don't know if it's if it's true, but apparently the more thorough QA and the like time save for the Chinese ones meant that they failed more often because they weren't as thoroughly checked but they could make more of them in a, the same t period of time. But like that was the problem with this sub. If you go online, you can see interviews with the uh, the, the guy who owns the sub company mm -hmm. talking about how at some point safety just costs more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Like he's, he's gotta be thinking about that right now. And you don't, they don't want to pay for, right. So like you save money <sighs> by not paying for the safety. I, like, I get it. I, I definitely sort of jive with that. But that's literally like probably one of the most dangerous things you can do. It's like getting in a like it's like getting in a rocket. Like, seriously, like you're sort of going yeah. you're going to you're putting yourself in a situation where something goes wrong. You're going to die. Yeah. Poseidon's but, not going to help you. Yeah, like, it's, it's not even a not safety thing you. at that point. It's like it's like, do you want to die or do you not want to die? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Especially like I don't know if, if we're talking ways to die. If it didn't like instantly depressurize, that's not on my top no. ten list of like being in a a sealed can with four other strangers and there's there's a and a, a plastic right? bottle. They're all billionaires. They're all billionaires. I think so. It's supposed to be a four hour tour. <laughs> they got they're getting a lot of bang for their buck. <laughs> Uh, is Jabba the Hutt a Fortnite character? <laughs> At if this not, point, it be. I would not be surprised. Isn't like everyone in Fortnite? I would start playing Fortnite again if Jabba the Hutt. If I could play Jabba the Hutt. 
<laughs> That's about I, how long they've been gone. I mean, speak a little job of the hut. Look at this. Look at this little oh, job of the hut. I see what we're doing right now. I want to talk about my little baby. Got a segue. I just spent a fortune. <laughs> I got a call from Alan a couple months ago, and he was like, should I make a walrus wearing a beret plushie? And I was like... <laughs> Uh, I didn't tell you no. What did I tell you? You said you said that you weren't going to say no, but that I should probably either not do it or figure out how to do it a lot. And I decided to not listen, and I did the smallest, most expensive per unit batch possible. Like if you can't sell a thousand of them, don't <laughs> right. sell a couple hundred of yes. them. Yes, and I said I'm just going to sell a couple hundred. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of costing like twice as much. A lot, yeah, yeah. This is an expensive little baby, but I'm now that I can see it in person. Actually, I'm I'm very. It is very soft. I was comparing yeah. it to something else here that's very soft earlier, and it's, it's ah. a toss up. <laughs> Let me see. Let's compare. Yeah, this is less soft. Less soft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I spent uh, several thousand dollars for this. For this sample. That single sound. plushie. For the single plushie. All the other ones are free. This one was several I, thousand I love your times. sales pitch is not even like, if you want one, you should get it. You're like, please, 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 please at least God. let me break even. <laughs> it's like, I swear to God, half, half of the decisions we make is like, you come up with a stupid idea and then you just, you plead with the audience to help bail you out. <laughs> and then the enjoyment they get out of it is watching the, the flaming disaster that is every I mean, single I haven't business even, decision. We I made. haven't even figured out how exactly I'm going to sell these. I don't even know if they're going to be on sale by the time this comes out or if they're still going to. They, they might just be gone. Oh, is or just, not that's even, the only one that was here? This is the only one. Oh, I thought some there. of those boxes were that. No, that's mine. That's no, open no, no. This is, this oh is a God. sample that's open source stuff. I will have I will have 200 of these ready to sell at open source. Okay. Sure. Can we talk For about sure. the sucklability of those walrus teeth? Yes. They do look like little walrus nipples <laughs> coming out of his mouth. If you look at it straight on, it, it they, they're a little they're a, a they're baby would latch nipply. onto that. You know, they're tit nipply. Uh Chelsea's dad has obscene, he's latching. His, he, he's latching his, right he has now. obscenely long nipples exactly like that. And he used to pick them up from school shirtless because he's kind of like a <laughs> surfer, bro. And they would like plead with him to wear a shirt because it's like they're like ridiculously long. Like it's, deflated balloons. It's yeah, it's like curse. Yeah. I'm I genuinely don't understand how how um I they're you know, they're like little like Mike and Ike's. Did they just come like that or did I don't know. he stretch them out? I should ask. <laughs> 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 Like there's a yoga for that. Is she? You want to try and get her? She's not gonna want to talk about her dad's nipples <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> but but were they? Did they start that long? Was it gravity? I, was it? It's dude. I I genuinely have. Oh man. <laughs> you can work it. I saw uh, there's this old old timey health nut called Jack Lalane. He uh, died when he was like yeah. 106, and everyone thought he was going to live forever. But he had a series of videos where he would, where he would stretch he, him. He would exercise individual <laughs> muscles in his body, and he would exercise this one in the leg and that one in the face. And eventually, he ran out of muscles, and he put yeah. out a VHS tape, Stopping which I, his heart. I found at Unique <laughs> Thrift Store called Jack Lane's Facials. Okay, he found a VHS tape. At a thrift store called Jack Elaine's Facials. And Jack Elaine's Facials. Jack Elaine's Facials. Okay. And you bought it was 25 cents. Was the, did the cartridge come out of the paper packing or was it sort of stuck in there? It was his whole family and him doing face. They look like this. Oh, okay. They were exercising their face muscles. And it was like a DVD that, at, or a VHS, Jesus, that at one point was actually sold. Like people bought this and then you just got it at a thrift store? Oh, or was yeah. it like a family tape? Oh, like a like an unreleased yeah, yeah, yeah. behind the scenes footage the of Jack Lane. donated it. It was no, this it was, is like a real. It was a product at one point. Yeah, it was a published uh, video series. And so they like it was it like teaching people how to move their uh, yeah teaching you how to move your face. If you've like, never tried moving your face, pick up a copy of Jack Lane's facials. Did they have like six packs on their foreheads or like <laughs> on their cheeks? I've been doing these exercises every day. If you're wondering how I still. Maintain a, a supple chin. <laughs> I feel like doing it would make your face more wrinkly, you know? Yeah, oh, you just kind of like... Ripply. Ripply? Yeah. Just give it more more duty cycles. Yeah, it seems like you're, you're kind of wearing it out. Because wasn't there... There was that guy who, like, stuck his head in a particle accelerator and it paralyzed oh. the side of his face. And it's just, like, visibly more youthful because it just never moved mm. after that. 
I think it's like use. It's like the more you use it, the more it's like the Disney animatronics where they like the more they move the silicone, like the foam skin starts tearing and they look like they're like zombies. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like that. So that so Jack LaLanne, I think, is maybe making people look older, but also stronger in the face. How long is the tape? You know, these are 90 minute tapes. Well, Holy crap. Tapes yep. of a man doing face exercises. What? What is the how long, point? How long could you keep it gone? Because Jacqueline kept it gone for 90 oh, minutes. Oh my God. I think I would give up after a couple. I also have a really short attention span though. So <laughs> I'm assuming if he's done, if he did every muscle, then there must be a Jacqueline's Kegels, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There no, is? I, I have no idea. <laughs> If only we had the source of all human knowledge in our pockets, we could look this up. We generally try not to cheat around here. Can okay, you can you control your eyebrows individually? No. I'm, I can tilt it, maybe. Almost. I can do a Almost. wave. I mean... <laughs> oh, you got the electro boom wave going on. This this is a lot of practice. I can't I can't go the other way as well. Is that weird? Like, I can go... I can go from left to right. They start getting tired really fast, though. Yeah, I'm already starting to yeah, feel... Can you, make, uh, can you make a water drop sound? Wait, Did you get that? Wait. That's that's pretty good. Can't do that. Seven that's years of college. Seven years of practice to get that right. How do you do that? This is how long I went to college. You uh, you oh, flick, oh, you flick oh, your. Oh, 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 it's not working. You gotta get the microphone deeper. In your throat. <laughs> Wait, you just. What part of your mouth is doing that? You're you're moving your tongue and your soft palate. So I was doing it right. <laughs> this is going to be the next 15 minutes of this podcast if you're thinking about what to Did do get with it? your life. Oh, you're getting pretty close. It's kind of yeah. like a, it's like a whistle and a flick you, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you like and you um you're trying to move air forward. So you're Closing your soft palate at the back of your mouth and then lifting your tongue a little bit. Can I ask the editor to just fake in a, for me, a, a, like a perfect a, drop sound effect? Like a I see. Well, like Jacob. A, like Niagara Falls sound effect. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to do it. And can you just make it sound like rainfall, like heavy rainfall? I'm going to open my mouth right now and I'm just, it's going to come out. Whoa. Whoa. How did you do that with no practice? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be something stupid like a foghorn. <laughs> Is this just the freaky body uh, podcast? Oh yeah, are we talking body? about our freaky bodies now? Yeah, we could do, do that. I kind of like this. I feel like we haven't gone here yet. You got you got one? Yeah, uh, I have a hole on my ear that's not my ear hole. You see it? Whoa! What is that? Oh, it's a, why do you have it's that? A, it's a cloaca. So yeah, exactly. So it's kind of gross because like sometimes like kind of gross smelling stuff comes keep out of it. My in dad it. has one on both sides. And my sister has one on only the right side and mine's oh on the left God. side. What? I have no idea. It's like a it must be some sort of weird, just like unsealed thing. Got a nipple? That's the beginning stage of evolution. It could be you it could be a four-eared human. I, it's going backwards. Like my dad had two years. and my sister and I only had one. So like <laughs> I feel like you would you would expect more holes on different parts. <laughs> I had a friend whose uh, brother had a hole above and above his butthole. Like, and it it was like it was like a you know a, it was a cloaca it was like a, a cul de sac it was a, a dead end just like a belly button kind of but it was it was above and behind his butthole and his mom freaked out and took him into the hospital see like my son has two buttholes and they're like no that's just he can put skittles and coins in yeah there. I would keep they stuff said, in there. it's like an actual prison wall yeah right? yeah <laughs> that's yeah I guess on your on your High school guidance counselor career path test. Yeah. They're going to factor that in. <laughs> <laughs> you do great in prison. Body height ability. <laughs> I mean, if you've got a micro SD card. Yeah. <laughs> I think this could have fit a non micro card. Like <laughs> really? I, yeah. Is that big? Mm -hmm. It's rumored to fit a thumb. Rumor. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to publish unsubstantiated, you know. I want to see on research only partially researched. I'm this is word of, of word of word of mouth. Word that, to mouth. It should be peer reviewed. <laughs> I don't think I have anything freaky that I was born with. I can think of off the top of my head right now. The freakiest thing is just that uh, this part of my thumb and hand are numb. <sighs> Because I was trying to arm wrestle a really, really big dude, and I built an exoskeleton so that I could try and arm wrestle him. And then the issue 
is that um, he the was, ex he was too strong. He was very strong. The exoskeleton did great. Uh, the guy did great, and then my hand was, was just in two between trash the trash trucks <laughs> with a smart car in the middle. Your hand was the smart car. The wrestler and the exoskeleton were the trash trucks. Yes, and so I was able to beat him, but, you but can't. I pinched a nerve somewhere. I think. But did you win? Uh, I suppose I I won the battle but lost the war. I think yeah. it's coming back though. I think yeah. I give it like two weeks. I, I, think I saw uh, Alan without his. Uh, Pants on. He was wearing shorts yesterday. Yeah, he has bruises all over yeah. his legs, and I'm too scared to ask how he got them. Well, let's see. I got I got this cut the other day when we were uh, doing metalworking, mm -hmm. and then this is all from the arm wrestling exoskeleton, just because there's just various Christ. bolts that are kind of still sticking out that I had. That like, looks like one of those, like a kind of like an, a scarred arm from like needle injection sites. What? Wouldn't it be here? Well, Why that's is it what I'm saying. Here? If you're sort of in the wrong spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. And then yeah, I've got I've got bruises. Just I don't actually know where those came from because the the suit it's doesn't It's a huge interact. bruise. Yeah, right here. There's a gnarly one. I think that might have been. It looks against, like a walrus slapped you. It was. I think it was the arm wrestling table because I had like one of those professional, legitimate arm wrestling tables, and part of it is like you can use like your legs with their legs on the table That's for leverage. Hot. And I think I use think your it, legs with the your yeah your, your like you're intertwining your legs with yes. them. Yes, 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 yes. Well, with, with the table legs, not is this with your, oh. is this legs. Is this all <laughs> the table legs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I mean, you could <laughs> probably do that. To yeah, your you you could have ran with that. I would have 100 percent believed yeah. it. Yeah. I thought this like was all a cover for playing. Yeah. With you're some you're already dudes. entangled up here. Why not add down yeah. there too? I think you could probably do that as like a mind game thing if yeah. you wanted to try and get your foot around their foot while they were going. <laughs> Okay, I got this too. Is that a, got, is that a double the, joint? Uh, here, let's see what I got. Can you can you do double snaps? I don't know. Am I doing it right? What do I... Oh, I think I did it. This is the uh, Three Stooges move. This is hard. I think that's all the freaky stuff. I, mean, I got what else? I have a weird birthmark. I had a big birthmark. On Where my is it? My stomach. It's like half my stomach. Oh. It looks sort of like the state of Florida. I used to have a red V on my forehead. <laughs> Until you retired. <laughs> wait, wait, so like. V for virgin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I lost my virginity way after that. <laughs> that was much more recent. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a red V that I think stuck around until like middle school roughly, because I remember when I was eleven reading Harry Potter and thinking like oh cool I kind of have like one of those it was just a birthmark I don't know what mm. it was um, was it like red or just like slightly more red skin it was it, it like faded over time it was like just a reddish color that became pinkish and mm. then just kind of like left but it was like just like that. Did it change in like the sun if you kind of got more sun exposure or anything? I don't or? think so. I don't really remember. I mean, it's weird, like like I haven't thought about that uh, since I lost my virginity. So it's like <laughs> not that long ago, it's but it's still literally been, weeks. still been a minute, <laughs> weeks uh, until we started talking about our body deformities. I thought this was going to go to sort of like a Voldemort level. Well, that's I mean, that's why I kind of like liked, starting to sign it when and... I was reading Harry Potter. I was like, oh, like, you know, you, you kind of like imagine as a kid, like, oh, like maybe I did have like a wizard kind of adventure when I was a baby and I don't remember. Right. That'd be cool. <laughs> but you didn't. It was just a normal. I don't think so. I think just... I just had a fucking fucked up genetics. <laughs> the normal route. <laughs> the normal... You're just like everybody else. except <laughs> slightly worse. <laughs> but it went away. It went away eventually. <laughs> that's my plan for most of my health ailments. Oh, wait, wait for it to go. It will. Yeah. It all goes away eventually. And yet men live eight years you know, less than women. You can <laughs> you can make them go away faster by climbing into a DIY submarine. <laughs> no. Full oh circle. Full circle. Is that a call back? That is such yeah. old news. I was reading about um, the the fact that it's made out of like a composite. I think they said it's carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, yeah. Some, I read somewhere else something different too, though. So it's like, who knows at this point? Yeah. Um, but then I was also reading that like and it makes sense that like a composite doesn't really make sense in that that load that like pressure orientation of like like a composite works well when the fibers are being strained in yeah, tension like a paintball canister yeah but not and not the other way so you would canister. need like a like an inverse <laughs> sphere like 
it doesn't make sense because at that point the matrix oh the, like, you're saying the glue, it doesn't work well in compression. doesn't work well in compression right because you the fibers you know it's like rebar and concrete is meant mm -hmm. to uh do the tension loads yeah and oh yeah the pressure on the outside is greater than the air pressure on the inside yeah so, yeah you're right so it's like the container is trying to uh implode not explode mm -hmm. and so it's i think like i mean i don't I mean, I am a mechanical engineer, and I would say that generally my <laughs> gut would say that it is a bad idea, but I don't know too much about composites. Steel, Donnie. Yeah, it just sort of seems like it would What's make sense steel? to make it out of steel. <laughs> but it's, it'd be hard to make it out of steel. I think that's the problem. Yeah. But the composites are sort of moldable, where the steel is like making a big piece of steel like that would cost a fortune. Well, but, yeah, but they, they don't just make it like you have uh, ribs and you have a skin. I mean, isn't that how subs yeah, are designed? I think, yeah, you probably could do a pressure vessel like a, like a cylinder or a sphere out of steel and not do any ribs or anything if it was thick enough. Because they really, honestly, at that point, like how much engineering can you put into it other than just like, it's like the manufacturing defects that are going to screw you on a sub like that. Like, it's like you could say, oh, like we only need three inches of steel, but then you like one weld is a little wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like it's almost like better. They just sort of, for something like that, just go th go thick, you know? At what point would it become feasible to just use an unconscious but still living whale body as a submarine? Because the whale... They can't go that deep. Can they not? No. I don't really know how whales work. Whales? I think the only time they go that deep is when they die. <laughs> I thought, I thought they were from? like they went like deep under and fought like giant squids and yeah, like but epic no, battles. I, they do. But I think this is like way this is like deeper than that. Deep, deep, like, deep. deep. Like I think the things that live yeah, down the there, it's got to be at the leave. bottom. That's where the yeah. the Titanic right. park parked. Okay, so, like, okay. So they parked the Titanic. Put a bunch of, that'd be the greatest meme. Put a bunch of parking <laughs> tickets on it. <laughs> <laughs> a little sign like. No only parking. 50 years parking only. imagine they go down there and there's just a, a no parking sign like you could, you could, <laughs> wait we could probably like you could make something and drop it down yeah, there. yeah. but you'd never see it i guess but you'd somebody it would like, eventually oh. see it and they would be like why is there no parking sign down <laughs> yeah here? we'll put a gopro on a half mile tether and just yeah imagine that mr beast video we put a no parking yeah. sign next to the titanic just make it out of jimmy tungsten or something jimmy when you watch this podcast <laughs> We're ready. Long time viewer, <laughs> first time commenter, Jimmy Donaldson, aka Mr. B. You know what he does on his free time? He plays mobile games. Yeah. I would too. Did you if... say muggle games? Yeah, I mean, yes. I didn't say that, but. What, what yes. did you say? Mobile games. Oh, mobile. For muggles. Okay. <laughs> it's a very small audience, but they do pay a lot. <laughs> Is this uh, when when is this gonna when is this gonna, gonna come out? Our, our schedule's been matter. wacky. Is this like is this do you think is this after open sauce? No, or open sauce open is sauce? like like a little less than a month from now. Um, so theoretically, we have yeah, like what, the same two time. More in the can? Yeah, I think. Could, should we be doing predictions? Like, oh wow, that sure went yeah, I badly. Definitely we should do predictions. Like <laughs> under <laughs> over. Yeah, on whether yeah. they find the people in the sub. Yeah, and whether or not those people go to open sauce afterwards. Because... All right. Do you think the sub is on the surface, or do you think it is stuck down below, or do you think it actually imploded? I think it's floating, but they they have no means of navigation. So you think it's on the surface? No, no, I, I mean, not float. I'm sorry, not floating at the surface. Floating mm. is it still called floating if you're just in the in the yeah. middle? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So you think that they're just lost underwater? Yeah, and unable to. I think it's that Logitech controller. Yeah, I have you ever had a Logitech device fail? No, no, I, I have. have. I've never tried. <laughs> the, the Razer stuff I have is kind of, eh. The mouse I have feels like it's not great. Wouldn't trust your life to I'm it. I'm not sure I would trust my life to a Razer. Mouse. I think <laughs> I would trust an Xbox controller. Can you imagine trusting your life to just anything that you buy off of Amazon? Yeah. I guess they're probably and just a, one of them. Actually, no, I have done that. Like climbing gear. I've bought that stuff off of Amazon before. Yeah. Chelsea, uh, your dad's nipples. Oh, yeah. Tell us about your dad's <laughs> nipples. Why are they? Were they always that long? Please stop talking about my dad's nipples. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> it's really hot in here. It is. It is. Yeah. It always gets really hot in here. <laughs> I think it's your dad's nipple. That's why it's so hot in here. You think maybe he just wears like poorly fitted shirts yeah. and no, they like wear tug? shirts. Like it just He doesn't no shirts. No shirts? Uh -huh. Maybe that's it. Maybe shirts like have a supportive effect we don't know about. Maybe cavemen had really long nipples. I mean, maybe it's just like some sort of evolutionary trait you survive better <laughs> if you <laughs> You know like how like like how old timey people their teeth are way smoother than ours. 
because they just had way more like grit and sand and uh, shit in their food. Maybe it's like that, but for nipples. Like we don't realize what these are usually shaped like. Yeah, that would make sense. It's probably better for like rock climbing too, because you might be able to grab <laughs> on the rocks. With them. Yeah, it's a good adaptation to have. <laughs> oh, do you have a grippy chest? Um, I don't. I don't think he does. I'm just thinking of ways it could be beneficial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, you're saying it's like a gecko, like yeah, gecko skin. You could nipples. like wedge them into like cra- crevices of the rock. Yeah, and, yeah. And use it like a rope. We're and, at three minutes right now talking about. Have you been keeping track of time? What are we? Yeah, at? Like, <laughs> my <laughs> whole life I've been keeping track of time. <laughs> I feel like we've dedicated far too many minutes to this podcast to show his dad's nipples. <laughs> Uh, I, th- I don't control time. I think the people on the submarine. <laughs> I think the entire submarine <laughs> is the size of a, of a trash can right now, and everyone inside has been proportionally shrunk as well. I have. Oof. I think that it. Uh, what if they pressed a button they never pressed, and it turned into a, a hot sub time machine? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have people, early onset dance. People died, Ian. People died. Well, we don't or know that. Maybe they did. We don't, we don't know think, that. I'm rooting for them to be I, alive. This I is think, a Schrodinger's joke situation. We don't know if these are offensive or not yet. Yeah. Honestly, I think everything's going to explode, right? Like, <laughs> explode? Well, I think that the implosion ends with an explosion. Oh, okay. A little bit of a oh rebound. Yeah, I think it's sort of like a whip, like a bomb. <laughs> I think everything sort of inevitably oh. looks like it exploded. Is my guess. I'm not comfortable with this conversation. <laughs> um, my guess, if I built this submarine, the thing I would be probably most scared of is the control system because you can't have, or I mean, at least the way they did it, I don't think you can have anything leaving the container. So that pressure vessel doesn't have any or shouldn't have any weaknesses via wires or any sort of signal. Like, there's no deviation in the pressure vessel that would mm-hmm. make it the strongest, right? Like there's, I like no welds, no nothing. So, yeah. oh, I, a, a monocote, a mono, monocot. Yeah, yeah, monocoque. Monoc- Most monocoque? men. I have, I have that. Yeah, yeah I'm also monocoque. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you have those two cloacas. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. I got my ear, my ear hole. <laughs> a little gender bender. <laughs> <laughs> I would be afraid of whatever system they use, which I think is wireless. I read is just Bluetooth, or is that just a controller? Wait, that how sounds you, like these guys. How do you get data out of your your monocoque? I think that's incredibly difficult because I think water is really good at absorbing yes. things. Very good at getting into. So it's like if you have a wire and you seal the wire to the cockpit, mm-hmm. it's going to go through the jacket of wire, run along the metal end. So it's like the wire is really not itself watertight. Mm-hmm. And so if you seal the wire, it still isn't watertight. And then if you have, you know, metal wire, like it's just anything that's not the continuous body is going to be like a like a penetration point. So if you did this, you have to have something that like permeates through the shell, which it kind of looks like they did. Right. Because everything is sort of strapped to the shell. I don't I don't think there's anything going in and out. You can do low frequency no. RF. Because the, the higher frequency right. stuff is what gets attenuated by water. But so now you like have microwave. like this wireless signal. So you're like driving by wire. And if something goes wrong on the inside or the outside and you can't control it anymore or the actual drive system has a problem as well. Like it's sort of cursed because you don't have a backup. It's just kind of like go down. Yeah. If something stops working, you can't fix it. And then someone has to rescue you. But nobody knows where they are, which means they're probably not on the surface because I'm guessing there's a transponder on it. Right. If it so, made it up. Like did the transponder, like the only thing that's probably like regulated and actually works is the transponder. <laughs> so it's probably not that, which makes me think they're not on the surface. So they're either like trapped down below or they lost their like buoyancy control and they can't come back up. Like they've got to be underwater. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's pretty reasonable to like why it wouldn't be on the surface. Maybe they're on the surface and they were just shrunk, shrunkified. I think they're tiny. Imagine on the they're surface. on the surface, but they still can't get out. Like fresh right. air that's a possibility. Right I think that they would have found them already if they were on the surface. <clears throat> yeah, because like visually, it's yeah, so much easier. Yeah, visually, to see. and I'm yeah. assuming like why would you? You've, they've got to have some sort of transponder on it because even if they come back up and they're way out of where they're supposed to be, the boat has to know where they are to pick them up. Right. The ships. Like, right. It, yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about ships, but like there literally has got to be some sort of transponder. Like there's no way that they would not put something on that. Yeah, the boat needs to know where it is. The boat knows where it is by calculating first where it's not. Right. And then subtracting that from where it also isn't. (laughs) 
Can you imagine? Where it could be and where it's not. Yeah. Can you imagine having a billion dollars and then being in a situation where no amount of money will buy you out of the situation? I, that is the that is the thrill. Like I think that's how you become a billionaire. Is everything is so boring? I mean, we've had this conversation with other other things that are way more inappropriate. Right. Maybe. Right. Like everything in life becomes so numb that you start like doing things that are like. I don't know, just like risky or crazy. Right. Or whatnot, there's, no, like, there's no other possible thing that could be that risky if you have billions of dollars at your right. disposal. Because you essentially have like a get out of free jail card yeah. for almost anything. You even have a better chance probably of surviving cancer than your average person if you have a yeah. billion dollars. Like yeah. there's certain things yeah. that like even even like that money will help you no matter what, except being stuck in a submarine at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> but just imagine like at some point when they were designing this sub, somebody said, why don't we hit it like a little bit of redundancy in the safety. And they're like, no, 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 no. no. We don't, That's just going to cost extra. Yeah. We're never going to run into that. You know what? I guarantee you, if you had to ask the people on that submarine right now, if they would have been willing to pay half a million instead of a quarter million for the tickets to make sure this didn't happen, they <laughs> would yes. all unanimously vote yes. Yeah. The yes, yes, we would have <laughs> yeah. paid twice as much to make sure this didn't happen. That's, I think, how most things get done in, in the real world, too, is that people are willing to spend twice as much money when a disaster happens instead of spending a tenth of the money to prevent the disaster. Yeah. And so you end up with all the disasters still and then the nightmare to get yourself out of the situation this sounds like the project alan and i are working on i'm trying to prevent him from getting injured i i i am <laughs> very confident. every conversation we've had i'm very confident that i uh look if i haven't gotten hurt so far i must be immortal so i'm i'm feeling pretty safe about what so we're doing this is literally how most crazy things were invented <laughs> and i commend i commend you i commend yeah. your spirit well, i that, commend your delusion that's 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 the, like that's the that's the um um, what's the word that's that's the the paradox right or the like the survivor the, bias uh, right? the, the, the dilemma right because it's like it's like we've talked about this before how did the a-bomb get invented you put a dozen uh kevin's yeah. backyard scientists yeah. in a room they're not trying to kill people they're trying to make this thing go boom exactly exactly but it's like it's also like you need a certain amount of recklessness to yeah. make anything new yes you just you need to like if there's a small chance that a, a nuke could ignite the entire world's atmosphere, a reasonable person would never test it. Yeah. But a reckless person would go, well, the odds are really, really good yeah. for us not igniting the entire Earth's atmosphere, which was like a thing that they like yeah. at first thought could happen. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I it's important. We gotta, we gotta like, do it. If you don't <laughs> I'm gonna keep him alive. Everyone says it's too <laughs> risky because you don't know what's gonna happen, but you're never gonna know what's happen gonna happen unless you take the risk. Mm -hmm. So you end up never doing anything. I feel like we've had this conversation before. We've talked about we should be more lenient with like like kids getting hurt yeah yeah i think if football if football can exist then oh my god football is way worse our chemistry kits should be more dangerous yes i really think so yeah like compared to if you look up old toys i mean like kevin's done videos about this right it's like old toys used to be really dangerous but they had cool stuff like there was yeah. one that was like almost literally a gun and it came with um What's that? What's that rock that produces acetylene when you when you put it in Carbonite. water? Carbonite. Yeah, some. So it's like it's like it was a gun that had like a flint igniter, and it gave you some of those rocks. And the idea was it was basically a cannon. They told you put the rocks in this can with some water. Wait, like you know, however many seconds or minutes. Strike the flint, and then it fires the projectile. That used to be a real toy that I mean, you could buy awesome. in that's a like magazine. Mining helmets, right? What what is it called? Co co can uh, cotton, candy? cotton candy. I don't I don't remember. Ket ketamine. Ketamine. Uh, rocks that produce acetylene yeah, when like you, you put, put them in, in water. water and they like Mo monocoque. Monocoque. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brent Underwood. So, no, I think mine just shrinks in the water. It doesn't produce uh, anything. It depends on how cold the water is. <laughs> I ran I ran those numbers, so I, I uh, started what a makerspace. <laughs> you started a makerspace. Oh, you're oh, you're an idiot no. too. Oh no no, his was properly funded in, in the Midwest where the costs are significantly. Oh, yeah. So Alan's it's, just still an idiot. I am I am still the idiot here. <laughs> Ian Charnes is doing fine. So I I uh, I helped to start and run this makerspace at Case Western Reserve University called ThinkBox. Here's ThinkBox. Mm. It's really awesome. It's huge, 50,000 square feet. Is it available to students or people outside or? Everybody. Everybody. It's free and open to the public. I actually really, I would have a bunch of questions. So you want to give us the yeah. spiel and then I'm mm -hmm. going to ask a bunch of questions. Sure. Um, and then I'll say why I brought this up. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, uh, so Sears Thinkbox, it's a 50,000 square foot 
Paradise. That's if you love huge. making things, that's, there's that's somewhere around enormous. five million dollars for the what? machines for making 50, stuff. Fifty thousand square feet. I'm like thinking about. It. We were at like Mr. Beast Studio is like seventy. Or I don't even know what it is. Like, that's wait. It's vertical. <laughs> it's vertical. But that's like there's like the size of like a department store. Yeah, we've got each floor is themed. So there's a floor that's called prototyping. It has the laser cutters, 3D printing, electronics, and not just any 3D printers, but we've got uh, you know the Stratasys uh, polyjet machines for like half a million dollars. What? What? On the laser what? cutter, what? we've got what? like yeah. wait, four wait, foot by three foot, 150 watt. It's philanthropy and through the university. Oh my God. Mm. So like if you love making things, and I know you guys do, mm -hmm. um, you probably, you, you have an opportunity to donate to maker type stuff you're donating your time and your money to make open sauce happen yeah um so you like you ha you have you have it here i'm not sure that I, I yeah. is, it, should... is it still if it, do you donate wood when you throw it in a fire is that the verb that you would use for that so you understand the desire i do yeah and <laughs> please go to open sauce this year or next year depending on when this comes out yeah, tickets well, are well, on well, sale can... now or later well what are your questions <laughs> okay so i think i think maker spaces are really cool but i also think that like fundamentally it's such a broken idea because there's no backing for them and so you end up with people like alan mm -hmm. who i remember when we were talking about this years ago and I mean, it's, it's interesting, though, because yeah. I think it's like it's a very sort of like it's a thought process that I think most people go through as they figure this stuff out. Yes, it was. I want a space where I can do things. Yes. And I can have the resources to sort of have tools where it's like, oh, if there's a bunch of people using a tool, mm -hmm. it'll make everything cheaper and more justifiable. And like the idea is good. It's almost like a workplace where everybody can use the tools, but it's sort of like funded. It's like you sort of. You look at it from more of the like community aspect of like what mm -hmm, if we did a co-op mm -hmm. without necessarily thinking about the social problems that come with it. Right. And so you end up in this situation where people say like, well, $30 a month is too much money to charge for a membership mm -hmm. without realizing that what they're getting is probably actually worth a couple hundred dollars a month and that the people who are doing the work to make sure that everything does work are, are eating that burden. Yeah. My defunct makerspace, uh, we had to charge, it was like 140 a month. Yeah. Because just the way that you know rent is yeah. around Los Angeles, exactly. So it's like it's like you know once you have that, it's sort of like then people there might be sort of like more entitlement or like I don't know. It just it it does not work well in LA specifically. It's more like I this feels bad saying it, but like I'm sort of projecting myself on it. It's kind of mm -hmm. childish because mm -hmm. the people that complain about the makerspace costing a hundred dollars a month do not understand what it costs to run any sort of business, let alone a business that yeah. does not make any money. Yeah. And so it's like, well, that's a hundred dollars. Like that's way too much. It's just the laser cutter that you already have. And it's like the laser cutter cost 10 grand, the rent for the laser cutter space cost this much money. It costs yeah. this, like everything is a, is so expensive that it's like, it's almost seems like the government's responsibility to come in like a library, which I guess people hate as well, to fund <laughs> this this environment that gives people the tools to learn the things that will turn them into people that make the government a bunch of money in tax dollars yeah. because they know how like it honestly, it like makes my head explode where you you sort of treat everybody treats investments as like monetary instead of, you know, like time and money, like food stamps. Yeah. So it's like give people food. And you will make money, but that will probably only happen 30 years from now. But nobody wants to look at it like that. So, like, my question is, how does it work? Like, how how is it funded? Because, like, if you can just get a bunch of money, you can make a makerspace. If you mm -hmm. take the financial burden off the, the makers that are coming there, you can, like, run a functional makerspace. And that seems like the hardest thing that everybody runs into. So, like, how did they organize a functioning makerspace and not even functioning. It sounds like this sounds like a top tier, like engineering. It's very facility. cool. It's very cool. Yeah. I think you hit all the right talking points. There's just about no makerspace. Like the, so you, you did not fail in particular the, the model of a community funded makerspace. Right. It's a disaster. Even, not great. even the, the biggest one, which yeah. was tech shop. Yeah. Tech shop oh, got ten, died. Yeah. tens of millions of dollars of funding from the federal government. Mm -hmm. They got grants from the vet, uh, veterans administration. Still they still had a hard time keeping them going because of just how much money it takes and how hard it is to sell the membership model. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. they, they try to sell classes. They try to sell storage space. They mm -hmm. try to sell kits. Um, the ones I know of that are still going, uh, there's one in, uh, in New York, uh, NY Resistor, which Becky Stern's a part of. That's still oh, going. Oh, very mm -hmm. cool. Um, but it, that's different. They're, they're not aiming purely at um, 
this kind of public outreach where you're having classes. Mm -hmm. It's it's a group of friends who are getting together and it's it's their space. And you can apply mm -hmm. and you can join. That's what you want. But you it, want a bunch of friends with tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't want to have like a communal thing. I think that and it's they, they have be, this model yeah. they call a duocracy. Like rather than trying to have open hours and staffing and maintenance plans, it's a duocracy where it is chaos. Yeah. It's barely organized chaos. But if what is do it's like you do it. Like do opposite. yeah, it's like, like if you, if you think the laser cutter should be moved over there, you, do you, just, you do just do it, it and it. you tell other people that you did it. And if someone cares about it enough to move it, move it, back, it back, then they do I, it. I think, oh God, I wait! Think, I feel like this. There's a different word for this that right. that's not duocracy. <laughs> no, I I think this is the only way to do it though, because you turn everyone into the shop manager, yeah. uh. and then you kick people out who don't function as a semi-functional shop manager. Because you like you you cannot like you dealt with the nightmare like yes. you think that it's noble doing a makerspace until you have to deal with some of these assholes. It was definitely a decision that a, a twenty six year old would make. That is definitely <laughs> what I did. Like like you think it's like this is why we can't have nice things. I yes. think it's the definition yes. of a makerspace. Is like you literally it doesn't matter what you do, people will come in and ruin it. Mm -hmm. And there has to either be a an enormous amount of money to compensate for that, so you can have actual staff that are running it like an organization, or you control the people that are coming in and essentially say like if you don't do the dishes no one else is going to do the dishes this place is going to fall apart unless yeah. every single like you force the people to fix the problems because no one's going to come in and fix it for them yeah and at a university we're really lucky we've got funding from the university it's philanthropic there's people like me who are alumni who say yes this is what i wanted to see when i was a student i give money out of my paycheck every month fortunately there's people who can add a lot more zeros at their check, mm -hmm. um, and that's how it's funded. We're, we we everything is free. It's there's no hourly fee to use the equipment. There's no fee for classes. There's no fee for storing. Wow. Stuff. It, the mind-boggling thing for me, because I took a tour, what like two years ago or something, um, was like like every I think every time you showed me a new floor, I was like, this is available to the public. Like this too. Like this. Like what? A water jet welding studio. Um, so the water jet is completely free too. Yeah, the, there a there's a there's a that. couple things that are consumables, and we're yeah. trying to get it funded. The garnet for the water so jet even, cutter, you, we can't give that away right now. Okay, so you mm -hmm. do charge you. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah, a, that's a fixed. It's cost. a minuscule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's pennies. Yeah, yeah. I like I, I, just, I just like it. It was unfathomable to me that like 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 someone could come in and after taking whatever like the required like um, classes for that and paying sort of like dead minimum consumable cost could just use something like a wire jet cutter yeah but because like the one that you that you have in that space is what's what's the what's the bed size like it's huge it's right? a little bit more than four foot by four foot because it, it's metric i think it's right, 55 right. by 55 so right half meter by half wait a minute it's an omax <laughs> 55 55 I should know what that means. It's a little bit more than four feet. By 55 four feet. feet by 55 feet. <laughs> it's the biggest sheet of plywood you've ever seen in your life to put on it. So when, uh, like our model, if you want to think of it as a business model, you were talking about business models, yeah. is reduce the barriers as much as possible so people come in and make very cool things. We take the photos and the stories of those very mm. cool things and we go to the donors to say, this is what we've done. Are you happy? If so, can you keep this going? Right. So we went to the state of Ohio. The state of Ohio mm. said, Oh my gosh, this is an economic engine for the area. You've helped over 250 companies get going. They brought mm -hmm. in over $240 million to the area and in investment and in sales. They donated uh, eventually $2 million towards Whoa. the capital costs. So it, it's a different model. It's a it's like a loss leader model. Yeah. <laughs> I feel there's a lot of like, I think California is a little too fat and happy for that too. Or it's just like, like yeah. look at this thing we did. And they're like, we don't give a shit. <laughs> right, right. And it's kind of like, 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 it, it, there's a really weird thing where it's kind of like I think there's there's like people who would sort of be around this area who would want access to those resources uh, usually have enough money to afford those own resources and they, like they, they, there's not really a price point that makes sense to go into a makerspace around here yeah well because there's how much nothing the good enough costs. it's like the yeah. chicken egg problem right like nobody knows really what you can do with a functioning makerspace mm -hmm. like that and so they're really like no one has gotten it started like my like i think probably one of the biggest blessing a couple of the blessings i had growing up one was uh the wood shop i had in in middle school was like mm -hmm. phenomenal um the old teacher died they shut it down for a year it was like sixth grade uh seventh grade they brought a new guy in He's awesome. Mm. I think it's Radley, Mr. Radley. He uh, basically decked out this wood shop to be like probably the most efficient, like 
kid friendly wood shop you've ever seen in your life. Like there's no table saw. There is a circular saw that's trapped in a track. Yeah. Mm, and so track saw. Yeah. Mm. But it's it was all yeah. it was all built by Smart. him. So it was a, the track was literally just oh. more wood that captured the saw. Put, mm. I think it was battery power, or I can't remember exactly. So, put, so oh, was this like, wasn't like a festool track saw. No, nope. it was something. It was it was like a circular saw yeah. trapped in a little wooden track. Oh wow! And so the guy he did everything. What's his name? Uh, Radley. Go, Mister Radley. And yeah. the there was a router table, but there were belt feeders. So you put the piece into the belt, and it would suck it through the router. So you never really get your fingers mm. under there. Um, I th- and there were only like a couple of like minor accidents, and it was always stupid stuff. Like this one kid was like leaning into a, a lathe, and there's like the threaded uh, part on the back to put the bowl mount. So if you want to have the bowl on the outside of the lathe, mm-hmm. and he like stuck his finger in it while it was spinning, and it, like sucked his finger. Just in it. what? Just to see what would happen? Yeah, it like circumcised his finger. He, like ripped his <laughs> finger out, and it like just like peeled the. So skin that that topic the... is why I brought this up to begin with, because you were talking about football. Um, oh, okay. Early, early Here we go. In the days, I, we give a lot of tours. A lot of parents say, you know, parents or prospective students say, "Is this safe?" How Nothing you, is you, safe. <laughs> well, let me give you the answer I give to those. Yeah, it's, it's say, no submarine. <laughs> they say, how do you, how, <laughs> yeah, Has anyone tried one. to build a submarine? You should show the like, you want to send your kid to in the submarine Titanic. in the bottom of the ocean or spend a few weeks in our workshop? <laughs> so the parents ask, how do you keep my kids safe? And it's an earnest question. Yeah. So I, I give them an earnest answer. I say, nobody uses the equipment unless they're properly trained. Nobody uses the equipment unless mm-hmm. they're properly supervised. And that's how we maintain safety. There is a risk. There are injuries that happen every now and then. We've had almost 600,000 visits, and there's been a few times, less than 10, where people needed, uh, people got a cut a yeah. couple times needed to get stitches. How do we measure that risk? <laughs> Next door to us is the gymnasium where the you know there's the football team and everything. If you participate in college sports, the I looked this up, the risk mm-hmm. uh, of death or, or injury, major injury, is 1,000 times what it was in our makerspace at that point. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying don't do sports. Um, I'm saying... There's a value to sports, right? Team team building skills. Yeah, people are dumb money. and they, under, they understand sports more inherently. They're like, yeah, yeah this is good. Mm. And they're like, makerspace are like, <laughs> screaming animal noises. Don't know what's going on. <laughs> Confused screaming. I mean, at that rate, almost like, have, have you ever like looked it up compared to like traffic accidents? I feel like that the rate. The are safe, Alan. I feel like The that way rate, that they got their kid to the college was perfectly <laughs> safe. I think at that point, it may be riskier. Uh, the drive to the makerspace may be riskier than being in the makerspace once you yeah. get there. I think the drive That's to the airport true. is riskier than the yes. getting on there. Yeah. Yes. Like Yeah. You can they you can do direct calculations. And I think like uh what do they call them? Actuaries or whatever like have done this sort of thing of like um sort of like uh how many deaths as like a thought experiment, how many deaths do increased airline tickets cause? Because mm. when airline tickets go up more people drive and there's significantly more people that die from that than when they fly on an airplane. So you can literally do like fun math that says like, well, now that like jet fuel is a certain cost, how many people did that kill? Like the cheaper that the submarine tickets become. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it all goes back to the sub. All lines point well, towards Well, because it's, it's, it's up to date, only the freshest news for the people listening to Safety Third. <laughs> the, 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 the freshest jokes, the freshest references. Nothing stinky or stale about this shitty podcast. Well, hopefully if we do enough of these episodes, someday we'll just accidentally like uh, say something that happens in the future. We'll accidentally like have some precognition uh, the press no i shouldn't go there oh. <laughs> everybody on the sub gets rescued boy we just Wait, got queen that. elizabeth dies we just got over a pandemic i can't believe we're going into another one pandemic now too. <laughs> fast and the furious 11 what <laughs> Uh, oh, I, I hear Marvel made another movie. <laughs> Eternals 2? <laughs> no. <laughs> they don't need a second one because the first one was Eternal. They're on Eternals 10. Eternal Boogaloo. It's like Never Ending Story 2. Like, <laughs> why? Why push it? So could we make this one not Eternal? <laughs> I, Mortals? I, Mortals. I, the, 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 I think, like, just... There's something... There's something, like, the... Because the, the, I've talked about um, sort of, like like tool use before with you know parents Mm. at a maker space and it's like it's like yes a table saw for example like incredibly dangerous but it's also like if you're if you're driving a car like every single day you are literally about a foot away from an accident that's gonna be like could potentially be on the freeway as dangerous as any accident that you'd have on a table saw 
people they drive delirious they drive drunk they yeah. drive high they just are on their phones like there's it's not nothing you can do to prevent it either yeah like, but it's it's normalized so it's yeah. like you don't feel that amount of anxiety being on the freeway imagine holding a piece of wood while someone else uses the power tool that's driving <laughs> And but they could be drunk or higher on their phone. So it's all about that normalization. Like when I'm on the airplane, uh, like I, I know the numbers of car accidents versus airplane. But when right. I'm on the airplane and there's turbulence, I'm gripping my armrest. And yeah, I so to, the fact that you're even thinking about these numbers yeah. while on an airplane means that you're still uncomfortable <laughs> on the airplane. Yeah. I have to tell myself, like, Ian, you know this is safe. You know the safety measures that are in these airplanes. The you fucking know the that. engine explodes anyone, outside the window. Like, <laughs> for anyone safe, who's still way safer that. than For anyone who's afraid of flying, let me tell you this. <laughs> Being dead is the easiest thing you'll ever do. <laughs> <laughs> You've been dead most of your existence. That's a good tombstone idea. I've, I have a list of running uh, tombstone ideas. Oh, um, so you're going to add uh, easiest thing I, I ever did. did. What if you just yeah. Yeah. Oh, sh- man. oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of them. Uh, my favorite one, which my buddy Steve Gans told me, was um, so it's on a grave- gravestone. You see it you know, as you're walking up to it in the cemetery, and it says, does gravestone advertising work? It just did. <laughs> What about uh, I shouldn't have eaten that was <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I think oops is still like oops. that's my favorite. Of so just oops, simplicity. Oops. You do the Ouch. whole thing in four letters, yeah. <laughs> I think that that really it's it's uh you know uh for sale baby shoes never sold or never worn. It's yeah. it's it's like that level of simplicity. Yeah. Six word story. I okay, so I think I think that like something I would love to see in the future is more like more makerspace stuff like i mean how do you how do you give me the resources that i wish i had when i was in high school and college where i was you know like i bought my first 3d printer like my my first job um that i had they like had a special insurance policy so you could use the machine shop and use all the tools and like they were super lax about it and it just it's impossible for most people to get access to stuff like that and a makerspace is kind of like it's like a library for building things mm-hmm. and you don't even need like crazy stuff like even having like 3d printers and a computer and like a piece of cad software is like the bare minimum like what do you think the the pathway to having libraries essentially for tools in in the future like is it government is it like private like how do you get people to do it because it's just otherwise it's just somebody working for free like yeah where where it's working is schools and libraries mm-hmm. i mean you you were already onto it like schools have funding for these kinds of activities they're enrichment learning activities um and they can be used like we use it at the university for almost every class people walk into that space and they think this is for engineers but we have chemists who are 3D printing folded, pro- uh, folded proteins. Mm-hmm. We have uh, a history class that came over and they made um, astrolabes and sextants to practice navigating the stars. There's biology, there's art history, they're doing 3D scans. Of I'm sorry, sextant? What? Yeah, how many of the kids <laughs> Sex- giggled? Sextant. Sextant. And this is a family-friendly makerspace? <laughs> Is that how you make babies? <laughs> That's why they make editors. Yeah, tons, well. Sex tons, tons of sex. <laughs> they can't all be winners. It's okay. <laughs> Humor judge rules. Guilty. So, so how do they? How do they just come in and apply, or how do they even find out about the makerspace? Like, the uh, part of my job is faculty outreach. So I go in and try to get the faculty to bring their classes to mm-hmm. the makerspace. Mm-hmm. But um, last year, I think forty three percent of all the undergrads at the university came to the makerspace at 43 least. Almost three yeah. percent It, it drives admission. People are hungry. I would 100% pick a school if they had a shop. Like, like right. no questions yeah. asked. I would have gone to, like, that would have been my first choice. Like, there's a place that lets you build all these things. Like, that mm-hmm. honestly, to me, is was, was one of the, like, I never, I didn't apply to MIT. I just sort of thought I wouldn't get in. Um, <laughs> so who, who knows? I probably <laughs> wouldn't have gotten in. Um, but that I think was one of the big things is it sort of has this notoriety of being a very like hands on. There's mm-hmm. a bunch of like like yeah. weird clubs and like show, like everybody there is just sort of got that like community that I think I was like really looking for when I was younger because it was just me and maybe like one or two other friends that kind of liked making stuff. But like mm-hmm. I was sort of the hardcore one, and I really, 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 really desired exactly what you're right. doing like i wanted that and i 100 percent, no questions asked that would have been my main goal to well, go on the, to the, on the plus that. side i don't i don't think any youtubers that i can think of went to mit so if you went to mit you would have been did too diana, successful diana went to MIT, right? oh yeah did she she did she Software? do like a pro some some mit program I she think. have one of her degrees one of her multiple degrees from <laughs> mit yeah I well think- 
if if you had gone, you would have been too successful and you would have never done YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a chance too. Yeah. Like actually. What's alternate universe Will doing? The one who made that decision? Probably driving to LA every single day, spending <laughs> two and a half hours in, in a car next to people who are drunk and high and falling I, asleep on their phones. And... I I got wait listed or deferred. I, I did I I got an interview with somebody for MIT. I do remember that. Uh, and I remember it going very poorly. So I I got on like the deferred list or whatever that was called. I did try. I tried. And then I realized very quickly that I had just done nothing of note when I was trying to talk to this grown yeah. adult in a hotel. I think I think I could have probably gotten in. I probably should have applied because I, I don't know what they look for. But thinking back on it now, like I think they give you a much better chance to get in by showing what you've done versus just an application. Right. Yeah, and they I, have the maker portfolio. Now. Yeah, and I I really think there's a chance that like I was sort of I was so like trying to do stuff with what mm -hmm. I had that I probably would have let me in. And if, if I found if I saw right. a kid who was like like really going out of their way to try to do things, that's probably something I would. Right. Yeah. Do you want to do some role play therapy? Alan and I could be guidance uh, account admissions uh, yeah. officers for you gotta MIT. Do, you, gotta, you gotta be very. You gotta just immediately tell me no, though. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We want to set the scene here. Yeah, we're okay. we're in a, a dimly lit room. Young, Will's wearing a young adult. Yeah. A, yeah. He's wearing a, a yet, necktie, too. like yeah. not really well tied. Okay. It's sort of out. It's the sizing. Sizing is all messed Two up. Two business yeah. professionals. Right. We're sitting behind really attractive a, one a and table. Also Alan. Yes. The more attractive. Wait, you got one. interviewed in a hotel room. Yeah. Why are we in a hotel? This is not a we're in a couch. hotel. We're in a hotel. Room. Wait, was this actually MIT? <laughs> no, we're in this? MIT. Yeah, it was MIT. Or wait, maybe it was like. Imagine a... it wasn't, and you weren't like. You, they, like... <laughs> you were duped, man. Yeah. Wait, it was and either they... a hotel or a Panera. I can't remember. The, <laughs> the chairs are very <laughs> similar. <laughs> the, cha the, the layout is very okay. similar. It, it was a Panera. It was in a decommissioned sub. I think. Oh it, God. <laughs> it was one or the other. You well, so, anyways, anyways. Yeah, so Will walks back. in. Will walks in, sits down, okay. shakes our hands. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My name's William. Hi, Will. I'm 16, 17 years old. Sure. Okay. Well, tell us about uh, why you think you're MIT material. Uh, I think that I like to I like to build things and make things. I don't, I don't think he's got. Oh shit. Oh, yeah. Shit. No, keep. Oh, no, you're doing great. You're doing I great. Like the falsetto. I think that why I like is he doing that? That's weird. I like that because I'm because I'm 16. Can you? Years old. Uh, and what was your what was your uh, grade point average? Uh, I was weighted or unweighted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that means. Oh, yeah, me I'm neither. Old. <laughs> um, okay, why don't you? Uh, it was a four point oh weighted. Tell us, a, tell us a little bit about your extracurriculars, yeah. Will. Uh, what do you do in your free time? I run cross country, and uh, I like to build things. Okay. And w and what would you say is your biggest flaw? Um, probably <laughs> my. The explosive diarrhea that I have. I, I, I see that you've got a weird hole in your ear. What's uh, that about? Did you see those two coacas? Uh, yeah, oh, it's weird. It's weird. It's just, it's just, it's just uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what's the What's the wet spot appearing that's, around your, that's, your it's pants? It's piss. <laughs> I pissed myself. Get out of here, kid. All right. I'm sorry. You don't That's belong be here. No. And you never will. <laughs> okay. I shouldn't have come. Damn right. Know your place trash. <laughs> and you spit on me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that i think solidifies i'm, I'm glad i never went <laughs> that's exactly how i thought it was gonna go down <laughs> well i'm glad you got to act that out now that, that the trauma is resolved I'm, I'm, now. I'm glad everyone got yeah. to see that <laughs> they got to live that that with me you're, you're the healing trauma can finally or, start or doubled uh well it's mm. kind of, i guess maybe it's like uh 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 Rebreaking a limb that healed the wrong ways. You know, the only thing that can okay. heal me, Alan, yeah. is a trip to the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> if you are a maker, um, there's a temptation to have a home shop and to be an island. And there's a benefit to going to those places and being the one, not only who's learning from others, but being the one who's showing other people the way. Uh, one of the greatest joys in life is when you can show someone something and see the light bulb go on mm. in their head. Um, you, you, you started a maker space, you're doing open sauce, you know. That cool things don't happen unless people, individuals with mental illness, <laughs> yes, actively go out and that. do things a that sound illness. crazy initially. Yeah, and you guys do that, and it's something I respect about you guys. Um, everyone can do that. Everyone can go to maker spaces, participate, be a part of the community. Uh, no one you're you're there to learn. No one you're there to share what you already know. What's the biggest roadblock to starting one? Like, is oh, there, and millions of dollars. Like anybody, a million, the millions, well, of I dollars millions of dollars. But like I'm saying, like, like more of like if there's somebody who is 
like listening, it was sort of, I don't want to say it has any authority, but maybe like in like a political sphere or something, like what sort of is the biggest hurdle with the government not funding stuff? Is it like, what is it like just they, nobody knows about it? Like no one's pushing it? Like, like what sort of would be a pathway to trying to put more tax dollars into maker spaces? Oh yeah. There, um, there's actually a lot of grants. The, the maker spaces I know at universities, uh, we're not alone in getting uh, a significant amount of grant money, some from the federal government, that's just free money. but a lot, yeah, just free money, a lot from the state, uh, state and local government have money to support now, you know, and then it's, it's somewhat, somewhat about framing the conversation. So for us, that would be a conversation about innovation. Uh, not everyone, perhaps only 10%, 15% of people who come to the makerspace mm-hmm. are there to do a startup company. A lot of folks are there just to you know, play That's around. That's where it starts, though. Just to fuck mm-hmm. around and find they out. They might not make a startup right now <laughs> in the same way that a kid is not building a fighter jet when they do their first time math in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, a lot of people come in uh, because they want to make a gift or they want to make some some right. fun thing. Yeah. And we don't gatekeep those projects and say that they're not worthy because if your motivation to learn... But you've seen some of them that you think are not worthy. You just don't tell them. <laughs> 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 yes! Make a Sorry, judge. Sorry, you found out. <laughs> make a judge comes out. <laughs> Yeah, to the guy who's laser you've cutting. Probably, you've probably I, seen some shit. I want to make a robot I can fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, welcome. Welcome. That's literally why you think we both play. Come in. We, uh, we'll come in one and all. Yes. Come in and then come in. Fuck, fuck your robot right in here. Here's we'll, the water jet cutter. We'll fuck your robot too. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to segue. <laughs> I, I could I could do with never seeing another uh, laser etched coaster. Yeah. Uh, of yeah, the Rock yeah, Johnson. Yeah. 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 Uh, personally, but if that's how you learn the machine, then that's great because when you learn new things, your brain can think new thoughts that yeah. it could never think. You're connecting before. dots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your muscle up there is stronger. Yeah. And then you start to think, oh, could I make this medical test strip? Could I make this low fidelity prototype of my mm-hmm. new smartwatch I have got an idea for? And you can because now you can do more. Yeah, like everything you learn is another tool in your toolbox of things to piece together. And I think if there's anything I've figured out over time is that you don't actually figure out how to do something. You figure out how to connect things together. And then when you really do have to figure out how to do something, you're going to bang your head in the wall. <laughs> until you actually, like, like I'm trying to build something right now and I'm like, it's a box and I went to fold flat and I'm like looking at like different hinges and stuff on mm-hmm. Amazon. And it's like, I what I need to do is just buy some of this stuff and actually like play with it and mm-hmm. see like, how does it work? Like, where does the pivot point? Like, is it sort of like a weird parallel- parallelogram where it kind of expands as it goes? Because mm-hmm. like, then it's like, then I understand it and then I can put it into what I want. And it sort of is like, like in my toolbox of like, oh, I know of a hinge that kind of does this. Right. Like it, it does a hinge thing in a kind of a weird way compared to what a normal hinge does. Yeah. And like where it can yeah. Make have a virtual rotation. Yeah. You know? And so it's like you just have to like do things and absorb information. And sometimes something that seems useless ends up being useful later. You know, what was the Adam Savage book? Every, every, you know, every tool is a hammer. hammer. It's like yeah. once you learn how to use a tool, you start looking at every single problem from that, yeah. you know, like from that angle. And then you like when you start having enough tools that you've learned, you can like create an amalgamation mm-hmm. of those tools. Exactly. So it doesn't matter if you're doing dumb stuff. You like you literally have to. Yeah. Yeah. You have to you have to stumble before you can run. Uh yeah. Before you break your both your legs falling off a cliff, <laughs> you have to stumble first. <laughs> and then and then like from uh from the like organization of makerspaces, like what do you think the future is? Is it is it like government funded? Is it private funded? Is it both? Oh, I think that over the past two thousand years libraries have evolved and continue to evolve like when you go into a library um when you went when i went into a library when i was growing up it was all books you know and maybe like one computer Ooh. yeah <laughs> gross um, more computers less books. <laughs> so how how do libraries survive when books are so much more accessible like libraries got started because books were inaccessible you know like the library of alexandria so today books are so accessible they're digital there's videos libraries have evolved over time and now there's computer training, right? There's digital literacy in addition to, you know, literacy. Yeah, literacy. yeah. And, and now you're seeing more and more makerspaces and libraries because they consider themselves the people's university. Right. And if more and more universities around the world are getting makerspaces, why should not the people's university mm. get a makerspace? Yeah. I used to go to a library that was by my high school when I was younger because they had a mean bagel pizza. What? It came with a pickle. They made pizza. At yeah, the yeah. They because they had a little cafe that was like part of the library. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, this wasn't like a read a hundred pages, get a pickle. No, no, no. Of? It was just you could go in there. I think for like a, a buck fifty, you get a bagel pizza, and you get like your greasy hands over the bucks. Yeah. 
So that's that's you know that's where I went. That's why I like going. They, to the they had like wax paper books for, <laughs> for that section. <laughs> They're like, like laminate plastic pages. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so then it's like, what would stop a small city from like having a maker space? Like it's almost you have to go talk to your city council, which actually sounds like the worst, <laughs> the, literally the worst way to spend an evening. Like like if you just went to your like a council meeting. At like a whatever town hall what do they call it like a city council meeting yeah. yeah and you're just like we should turn a library into a makerspace like i mean that, i feel like most of these people have no idea yeah makerspace is still a niche word and people need to see it before they can understand it mm. um but there you are not far from a functioning makerspace almost every university college has some makerspace or approximation there's thereof. one in my hometown mm. so you that's, can bring close to bring you, your yeah. key decision makers to those spots mm. um to, to tour it and see what's it's a lot of available. work so you have to like mm. make it first and then show them mm -hmm. the city and be like hey here do you want more of this because there's been a couple that seem to have like they just don't ever really get off the ground because mm -hmm. nobody wants to give them any money yeah the it is really hard um <laughs> to to bootstrap we had a big um advantage in that uh, some alumni of the university mm -hmm. who love making things says we we want pl a place where students can apply what they're learning in the class can use their you know innovative minds to do entrepreneurship uh, and they they funded it and once we funded it and we could start to show success stories then it um it kind of blossomed so you still basically it's hard to like get started a little bit of luck a little bit of a lot of bit of mental illness some poor sod is still gonna have to like trek through the mud to convince the you know local there's no mm. easy button. Yeah. <laughs> if it was easy, it wouldn't be worthwhile. Uh, yeah. Still takes some sucker. You got to find one sucker to get the party started. <laughs> yeah. They work for like 10 years of their life and then they finally get something like, you know, halfway functional or they but you burn can, out and, yeah, and, falls and apart. go back to YouTube. And go back to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but you can be a champion. You can be a champion for something. Keep talking about it. Get an echo. The, the, the biggest success you can have is when you hear someone parrot your idea back yeah. to you. It's easy. All we do is sit in a chair and just talk about submarines and then yeah. the space for a bit and then someone else can do all the hard work. Yeah. <laughs> you mean the editing? Uh, the well, doing, like if, you're, if, you're, if you <laughs> are listening to oh, this okay. and you have millions of dollars and yeah. you would like to help a local makerspace. And you would like to have less dollars. Yeah. And, go, but you don't have enough to go on a submarine ride. Go to google.com. <laughs> Wait, and if you're look. listening to this and you are planning on spending money on a submarine but no longer want to spend money on a submarine, and yeah. that's extra money that you could give to uh, a makerspace. We will 3D print you a Titanic replica. Yeah. yeah. There's probably one closer to you than you think. If you go to google.com Titanic, and type space. in ti Titanic makerspace. <laughs> and is it see what pops Your makerspace is kind of like the Titanic. My makerspace Ooh. was the Titanic makerspace. Hey, that's... <laughs> uh, the, blah, it, blah. it was a real thing. That's the it's way only the, offensive that's if the way it's not the, true. The cookie sinks. <laughs> The cookie sinks, or that's, that's, that's the, the way, way the, the cookie, cookie sinks? That's the way the cookie hits an iceberg and, and, like and kills Leonardo thing. DiCaprio. Ugh, we are classic. off the rails. <laughs> I, no, that feels, this feels more on the rails than we usually are. Yeah, honestly. it takes a couple in a row before yeah. we, we really stop. You know, the degaff <laughs> gets turned up to 11 or we start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> we start like basically half the podcast is a reference to how all the podcasts are recorded like the same day right yeah <laughs> except yes, for this yes. this is a one day this is a one this is a one-off this is going to be the most unique high energy podcast we're going to have for a while i guess <laughs> well thank you to our very special guest ian charnes yeah uh, anything you want to shout out or promote yeah uh you know if you're if you're done with the subs just hit the subscribe Mm -hmm. Wait, Whoa! Can, hey! Can, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, there you go. That. The, the one sub that won't kill you is yeah, subscribing to Safety Third. He, safety he wore it better. <laughs> um, thank you to everybody on Patreon who supports us. Have we been missing stuff on Patreon? Open Source has been. I like, assume rotting. a lot of things. I think a lot of the comments at this point are asking why this yeah. isn't getting uploaded well, it's on Spotify. Because of Open and so everywhere else. Basically, everybody that does anything around here has had their brain completely sucked out of their skull with a straw <laughs> called Open Sauce, and <laughs> that's it, the sauce. That's oh where the my sauce God. comes I, from. I, this event is going to be buck wild. Can but you tell us why God. it's called Open Sauce? Uh, so we needed a name, and I was we, we were like contemplating stuff. We were just like it's a it's a convention so you've got con okay, it's a okay. it's a con and it's become your job so you could call it a, a con. con job con con <laughs> con job con, uh, job. con fair <laughs> fair con fair con fair fair <laughs> fair fair uh how about yeah. wayfair is wayfair Wait. taken <laughs> maker maker <laughs> <laughs> i i basically 
what it is literally is open source. Sorry, Jesus Christ. Open source and like show me the sauce, like secret sauce. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. like what is kind of your, well, how did you do it? And, and then you're kind of sharing it publicly. It's kind of what it felt. It's sort of very community driven and also not like a, not an attempt to be literal. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that giving it a sort of unique name lets it stand on its own. And it's not right. like people aren't trying to figure out what it is. They have to know what it is. Like mm-hmm. there's no context. It's just like, this is the thing. You need to know what it is. It gives you some clues, but right. it's not trying to say it's a convention or a fair or this yeah. or that. You really put a lot more thought into things than we all give you credit for. Yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> you, you, the problem is you can't really share that you put a lot of thought. He is into a stuff smart man. It comes across as really weird. No, you're ruining the brand right now. <laughs> I can assure you, he's not. <laughs> Do your no, I, I, just go down from here? <laughs> my the amount of effort I put into things changes depending on what I'm doing. <laughs> sort of probably the most fun aspects of making things. It's just like deranged, impulsive. Yeah, I always like to think of, um, what was it, the, the, the CEO of Coca-Cola after the whole new Coke ordeal. Remember that? Like, What did he do? So it, it was it was like, uh, like Coke was competing with Pepsi. And so like in order to like get their market share back, because Pepsi was winning the Cola Wars at that point. It was like, what, the, the, the 70s or 80s or something? Yeah, I'm, um, a, I'm a veteran of that, actually. Oh, you remember that? Yeah. Okay, so. I, I survived the Cola Wars. So you remember that during the Cola Wars, uh, Coke decided to do a campaign where they created new Coke. Old Coke is dead. New formulation. It's sweeter. It's like Pepsi. New Coke. And everyone fucking hated it. They hated it so much that they had to come bring back Coca-Cola as original. And to this day, that's still on the cans. Original Coca-Cola. And it's like PTSD. After the whole ordeal and all the like the hoopla, Coca-Cola became the winner of the Cola Wars and never has been on the bottom. The Coke sense. Wars. Yes, the Coke Wars. Yeah, the great. And so it was like the CEO of Coca-Cola. Was this the this, the FBI thing or the CIA? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> or was it different? Different Nixon? Coke Wars. Nixon. Yeah. Oh. That was Coke Wars too. <laughs> like okay. Boogaloo. But the, I think it was like the CEO of Coca-Cola at the time. Like someone asked him, like, was this entire thing like 4D chess marketing? Because you're obviously on top now. No. And so his response is, "We're not that dumb, and we're not that smart." Yeah. That's always the answer. Is it's it's usually the it. most literal, obvious thing. Like mm-hmm. no one's gonna make that kind of a risk mm-hmm. on purpose, and no one's smart enough to know that's how it's gonna pan out. Yeah, I think that's that's like the the line that I think like to straddle, which yeah. is like the nice the Goldilocks zone. That's not too smart, not too dumb. That's basically open sauce. It's like I just yeah. have a really good feeling. I really like this stuff. It's sort of just me projecting what I enjoy. And then it's like, well, I think that if if that feels good to me, I think other people probably like it too. And then we just uh, sent it and yeah. dug a hole. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you everybody for for uh, listening or watching. Thank you everybody on Patreon. Have the names yeah, gone across already? Names, Are we still doing names. the name eating? No, things? I don't think so because the last time me and Kevin tried to do a bit in the video, nothing happened. And so I think maybe. <laughs> what if we just do ones that are lower effort? Like, oh. like what if you like grab a name and you're gonna like move it down slowly? Oh, so that it's like yeah, your it's hand sort of, can just, just well, kind of match. Like it doesn't. Yeah, it just makes the speed it, yeah, of yeah, 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 it like, like it was gonna yeah, happen yeah, yeah. anyways. Okay, yeah. all so right, that way it's like good. zero effort. A little easier. Oh, look, that name turned red. Yeah, but can you do that with your butt? <laughs> can you move your butt like down slowly so that it? Oh, my butt. Yeah. Uh, I can move this thing's butt. Look. Okay. Oh, look, the walrus. Um. I'm gonna drop it, and it's gonna be the same rate as a, as a name drops. I think it made That's faster. still pretty. That's actually still pretty hard to <laughs> How do. How many names still... are there? How much time do we need for the names? <laughs> Can't be that many. Though somehow the bills are still getting paid, so maybe it gets, it's more it than that. It gets I shorter every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, uh, if you're gonna be at Open Sauce and you haven't done it already, you need to. In uh, your safety third uh, Patreon member, uh, you we, we sent a form. I think it might be too late. I don't really oh know. Gosh. <laughs> We're going to try to do something. I haven't thought any of this through. We just have to make the event. Everything else is secondary. Yeah. Well, whatever. (laughs) Bye. Can I I give a shout out to my cat? Yeah. (laughs) I love you, Pistachio. Does she listen to this? Yeah. Yeah. She's a a subscriber. Hell yeah. Yeah. Put it on for the cats, cat TV.